What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business, Lady Simone Candle Co. Today, I'm here to give you some helpful tips on how to come up with a business name. I get asked all the time, how did you come up with Lady Simone? What's the basis behind it? Was it hard for you to pick out a name? Paris, I am being creatively stumped. I have no idea what to name my candle and or soap business. So I am here to give you a few helpful tips. So let's just get started. Let's dive right in. First, I wanna say I hope the volume is better in this video. I know this past video, the volume was a little iffy. This is my new recording area right now. Upstairs is a little chaotic. We're getting prepared for the new baby. So um, I got a lot going on in this house. So this is the space. So I hope the volume is better. I hope so. If not, let me know and I'm gonna try to keep adjusting my recording stuff. Um, so let's just hop right into it. Tip number one, avoid hard to spell names. So when it comes to choosing a business name, one thing you want to keep in mind is how it's spelled. Yes, you want to be creative, right? But you also don't want your customers getting confused or, you know, getting kind of letter tied when they're trying to type in your web address or even try to find you on social media. Um, so try to be aware of how you wanna spell your name and still being creative, right? So for example, um, Simone, typically um, you instantly think it's spelled with an S <laughs> and it's not an S-I or an S-Y. And so um, Simone, at least how I spell it because it is my middle name, um, it is spelled quite differently. First of all, it's spelled with a C, and it's C-I, not C-Y, and it has two N's in it. <laughs> so instantly, it, customers are, you know, can get thrown off because of how you naturally think Simone is spelled. Um, so that was one thing I learned. However, that's how my middle name is spelled, so I can't really control that. <laughs> However, when you're choosing a business name that's not your name, or has no association with any of your names, keep that in mind in how you spell it. Next, try to avoid choosing a business name that is limiting. And I say that because, let's let's think of some examples. Like, for example, wedding dresses, right? Somebody wanted to start a wedding boutique. Um, you don't want to limit yourself, if you don't want to limit yourself to just wedding dresses, and you also want to offer other accessories and other services such as you also want to offer veils you also want to offer shoes you want to do the fittings and the customization for the dress or you know um headpieces or anything then you wouldn't want to name your business like a wedding dress company or something like that where if they go in or if they see you on the street they instantly think that's all you sell is wedding dresses. So you kind of want to, um, like, so you have like David's Bridal, right? David's Bridal, perfect, right? It's bridal, so we know that that store, when you walk in, you're going to find all things bridal related. Think even about Amazon. Amazon, books, it sells, so they wouldn't want to name themselves like, onlinebooks.com or something like that. I'm just throwing stuff out there. They're named Amazon. And so when you go to Amazon, you instantly can find tons of categories and different things that they offer. So try to think of a business name that won't limit yourself for the future. So if you wanna release more things in 
as an extension of your candle business. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with having Candle Co. Or even, you don't even have to have Candle Co. in it. Um, but at least when they know they go to your site, they can expect candles. But Candle Co. and candles, um, they, customers typically know that that can encompass a wide range of other products. Such as soaps, room sprays, anything that has a fragrance to it. Next, what you want to do is once you find or you feel like you got a name that you might can work with, you want to conduct an internet search. So when I type in Lady Simone, Lady and Simone is considered one word, right? And the way Simone is spelled, it's not spelled like how Simone is typically spelled. So when I did an internet search, I did not find Lady Simone spelled in that way. I did find a couple Simones that were spelled differently that were businesses and that had Simone in their business name, but not the way I did. So you want to, to do an internet search just to kind of play around with the internet, play around with social media, type it in and see kind of what comes up. Not that it will completely stop your show, but it should give you some pause, uh, which will lead me into my next tip. My next tip is go ahead and secure your, don your domain name, which is the .com part of your business name. So the reason why I said a minute ago, have a little pause if you should, because you wanna make sure you're doing an internet sweep. So look through the internet, like I said, look through social media, just be sure that there's no one out there really from your initial search that has um, your business name spelled the same, offering the same products. Um, like I said, there's a lot of Simones out there. There's a lot of ladies, a lady and some other, you know, name out there. But I didn't see um, anyone that had Lady Simone spelled the same, tagged on as one word. So once you do your internet search, the next step is to get your domain name, which is your .com. So you do that by going to websites such as GoDaddy.com or I went to Namecheap.com um, and secured my .com part for my business name. So that way it will be LadySimoneCandleCo.com. They are relatively cheap. They're usually a yearly subscription, which means they renew it every year. Um, so you would pay that same price every year to keep your name um, on the web, right? So that way you can have a web address. And um, I know for me, I think mine is like $8.88 a year, $8.88 a year, like literally. Um, so uh, just check out those sites and they'll even make you do a search for you to even buy the name. And so it will let you know whether or not that name is taken or available anyway. So not only will you do an internet search, but even if you go to godaddy.com or namecheap.com, you're going to have to type it in for them to search um, the database as well. Next, what you want to do, go ahead and grab those social media handles, right? So you got your .com name, go ahead and secure Facebook, Instagram, whatever other TikTok, whatever other social media profiles that you want to grab, go ahead and secure it once you get that domain name. Then you go into my next tip, which is do a trade, a quick trademark search. So you want to go to I want to make sure I get this right. USTPO, no, USPTO.gov. I have it over here just so I wouldn't screw it up. So USPTO.gov, right, to get an idea on whether or not it's even um, able to be trademarked. Not that you're going to get a trademark today, right, but it's a good way to kind of give you a little bit more peace of mind in securing that business name. So I did the same thing. I typed in Lady Simone just to make sure that in the future it was, you know, able to be trademarked. I'm actually in the trademarking process myself. I've learned so much during this process. Um, it's been almost a year and well, I can't even say that. I think I started the trademarking process early March or April. So, you know, we're going towards the end of the year, going into a new year. The trademarking process is quite tedious. I went through an attorney um, because I just felt more comfortable letting the trademark attorney handle my business. 
Um, yes, it's expensive, so it's nothing that you need to feel like you need to go ahead and do. Um, but you do want to make sure that you have the opportunity to trademark should you want to later on. And I will do a video later on, probably sometime next year, once I kind of get through the trademarking process and share my experience and what it was like. But yes, that is the next step. My last tip kind of culminates several um, tips, but I wanted to save this for last just so I can have like a little mini discussion about it. So I know in my group coaching program, choosing a business name was one of the first things that we tackled when we were working on our business plans. And one of the things that I shared with them is that choose a business name um, that has some meaning to it. You know what I mean? Like choose something that is catchy. And even if it's not necessarily catchy, let it be simple or intriguing, or at least let customers know when you tell them what your business name is, they kind of at least have an idea on what your business is and, and the things you offer. So just take my name, for example, um, a little story behind my name. Everyone in my circle at church, my friends, you know, even some of my family, I've always been called Lady P. Like, it's always been that. I've either been called, hey, P, or hey, P, what's up? How you doing? Or they've always said, hey, Lady P, what's going on? Especially when my husband and I got married, it was kind of just what they gravitated to. Like, oh, there go Mike and Lady P. Like, it was kind of that thing that um, we kind of took on. And so Lady has always been a part of my nicknames and what people viewed me as and how I was perceived. I've always carried myself as such. Um, I take pride in how I present myself. Um, I don't play about, you know, my reputation and my perception. Um, I'm just very much aware of myself. I know what I want. <laughs> um, I'm very secure in myself. And so Lady has always kind of tagged on to um, my personality and how I kind of maneuver through life. And like I said, Simone is my middle name. I love my middle name. I think Simone has a very classy, um, almost like a luxe ring to it. And so putting Lady and Simone together, it um, almost kind of presented like a very classy royal sound to it. And so I love that about the name. And I knew I wanted my business to um, present itself or at least showcase itself as very um, classy, classic. You know, I use a lot of neutral colors now. Um, it um, also gives you that appeal of wanting self-care, right? Taking care of yourself, um, taking pride in how you feel, right? Taking care of your mental health being secure about yourself, being confident, being empowered. And that is what my business represents. And so Lady Simone just stuck. It really did just stick. And so that is one of the reasons why Lady Simone has that meaning for me. It's a very purposeful name for me. And so in choosing your business name, and just like I tell my former students, and I want to tell you all, really choose a name that sticks to you, that can expand with you because I have more products that I am releasing that I wanted to release this year, but you know, baby girl is coming and I was really, really sick earlier this year with my uh, pregnancy. And so a lot of my expanding plans have been shifted to 2022. And a lot of the products that I wanna release ties in with self-care and taking care of yourself and feeling like a lady and feeling beautiful and empowered. And so um, that is what I want to encourage and tell you all. Run your name by your friends and family. Um, like I said, have a brainstorming session with you. Try to pull from an experience. Try to pull from a past story. Um, it doesn't have to be deep, but you do want to have a name that five years from now, you're like, I still love that name. You know what I mean? I know many of you out there 
are ready to start your candle businesses and I know you're not doing all of this work and research and taking time to learn everything just to start a business to last for a year or two. I know for me, I want my business to last for quite some quite some time. So Lady Simone needs to expand and keep up with the changes of the candle industry. So keep that in mind when you are also brainstorming and solidifying a business name. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope that was helpful for you. A few reminders, do not forget that I have a coupon code with Marilyn Wax Club, Lady C5. You can get 5% off of your order. So make sure you check that out if you are interested in buying some wax from her. Also, do not forget that my group coaching program is on its way back. We start class November 28th and the enrollment closed November 20th. So make sure you secure your seat. All of that info is in the description box, y'all. If you're curious where to find my coaching program or information about it, in the description box is under All Things Lady C. That takes you to all of my links, including enrolling into the coaching program. So I hope you all have enjoyed this video, and until next time, bye. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business. Like, Jesus, I'm out of breath. Okay, I'm about to do that again. <laughs> you're making mommy out of breath.